Now that we have our hands on four different cellular integrated 5G routers, including the new MoFi 5500 5G model, we're going to give you a first look at that new MoFi 5500 and share more about the state of 5G cellular integrated routers at the end of 2021. Is it time to buy? Find out. Hi, I'm Chris with the Mobile Internet Resource Center here today to talk about the MoFi 5500 Cellular Integrated Router. We have it right here. We actually did a first look video on this product line way back in March when the 5500 first premiered, kind of replacing the much smaller and way out of date MoFi 4500 in their product line. Uh, the 5500 we got in March was the dual cellular version with two Cat7 modems. and. Now we actually have the version with a 5G integrated modem in it, so we're kind of diving back in and uh, putting the uh, MoFi back into testing, particularly since we now have a total of four cellular integrated 5G routers on hand here. And I'll show you what else we have here in a minute and just how they compare. But first off, a uh, kind of a quick update on just what is the MoFi 5500. So it is a physically, physically pretty big uh, router that is um, available without cellular for 299 and then goes on everything else is identical um, it's just adding different cellular modules depending on how you configure it all the way up to the highest end model is just 699 for this 5g version with the Sierra wireless um, em9190 modem in it so uh, there's actually two different 5g versions from mofi and uh, well, I'll explain the different versions in a second. First, let's just go over the basics of what makes this different from the MoFi 4500 and the basic specs of this router. So see across the back, it has actually uh, five ethernet ports. They're all gigabit ethernet ports, one WAN, four LAN. It has a USB tethering port. It's a USB two speed uh, tethering port, but it can tether to iPhones, Androids, and to a whole lot of mobile hotspots. So you can add cellular via tethering that way. It has a two different power inputs. It has a SD card slot that I don't even think is used in the software right now, as well as a console slot, which is also not used. So some things that you are there for maybe future expansion or just kind of built into the hardware that they have. And then we have across the back, these four antennas are the Wi-Fi antennas. It is a four by four MIMO Wi-Fi configuration. So it should be um, able to host a fast and uh, decently long range local Wi-Fi network. And unlike the MoFi 4500, which had well, slow, you know, fast ethernet, not gigabit ethernet ports, and just 802.11 N wireless, just uh, um, not even five gigahertz, uh, the 5500 here is dual band, 2.4 gigahertz and five gigahertz uh, Wi-Fi. And it is 802, it is Wi-Fi 5, you know, 802.11 AC. So it's a little bit disappointing that it's not Wi-Fi 6, 802.11 AX, but you know, the 4x4 MIMO should make up for the little bit of the downside of being one generation of Wi-Fi out of date. Um, so a lot of Wi-Fi capabilities built into this thing. And I guess one of the other biggest things to note is just how physically big this is, particularly for RV and boat installations. You gotta keep in mind where you're going to fit this. You can mount it, you know, flat on a wall. If it's presumably, you probably have the cellular going to outside uh, rooftop antennas, but if you're using the internal cellular antennas, these paddles, you've got, it's almost like a piece of wall art. You've got this really, really huge thing that you have to find a place to find in your RV or boat. But so that's kind of the differences with the um, MoFi 4500. Um, now about the cellular options that are available. You know, the basic cheapest version of this is a $399 version that comes with a single Cat7 modem, so only just two wife, two cellular antennas. Then it goes to um, a dual Cat7 version for $549, you know, dual modems, which is kind of nice for connecting to two carriers at once. Um, but the more interesting ones, the more higher end models, is they actually have a, a Cat20 cellular, so basically the pinnacle of 4G. For $499, which is a kind of what they are pushing as their value model. And then they've got two 5G versions. They've got the version we have here with the Sierra Wireless EM9191 modem inside that is $699. And then they've got a version for $649 that uses a Quectel modem inside. Um, 
Both of those modems are using the same Qualcomm X55 uh, modem chipset. Theoretically, they should have identical performance, but uh, MoFi tells us that the only reason they added the Quectel for, uh, to the product line was they were out of stock of the Sierra Wireless. The, the modem chips or the modem modules are harder to get. So they brought in a cheaper version. They say it doesn't perform as well, and they're mostly trying to focus on the $699 version, the Sierra Wireless one. So keep that in mind. Um, uh, it's basically a stock issue and slightly cheaper and maybe slightly less performance. But we have here the version with the 9191 modem from CR Wireless. We have done a few little performance tests with it because we've just got our hands on it. And it is indeed. We're, we're actually able to connect to T-Mobile 5G and are seeing some uh, promising performance out of it. So, wow, we've got a 5G uh, router from MoFi. Now, how does this compare to some of the other uh, 5G options that are on the market? Um, well, you know, just a quick comparisons here. One side, me here, I've got the InstiConnect 5G, which we've also done a first look video and gone kind of deep on. The InstiConnect 5G is unique in that the modem and everything else is in this little cartridge module that mounts up on the roof of your RV. This is a primary market. You can put it on a pole or just mount it on the roof. And so you've got your 4x4 MIMO antennas and the modem are connected by just a few inches of antenna cable and the antennas are high gain and located where the best possible signal is. So the uh, InstiConnect um, theoretically has an advantage by having no cable loss between the modem and the antennas. And then you're connected to an inside router via a long USB cable. Um, so that is the InstiConnect 5G thing. And then its cost is a $9.99 for this bundle here. So a bit more pricey different set of capabilities has completely different interior features. So you should go compare them to see if that's, which one is a more appealing for your particular needs. And then the very first 5G cellular integrated router we got our hands on was the Pepwave Max Transit 5G. Uh, we got this uh, early in, early in uh, 2021 and it is actually already a discontinued model. We think Pepwave just kind of put a 5G into the existing Max Transit CAT 18, just replaced the modem module, um, up the price to $999 and put it out there. But the internal router really wasn't up for, you know, wasn't a good match for the modem. So we've seen when we were testing this that basically even though the 5G networks in some places were fast, capable of faster than 150 megabits per second, this seemed to cap out at 150 megabits per second, and that's probably why Pepwave has already discontinued this. It is it's basically just a stopgap interim. If you really wanted to connect to a 5G network, there it was. Um, so discontinued, don't pay attention to the Max Transit 5G, because Pepwave's, I guess, main single modem 5G flagship is out now. This is the Pepwave Max BR1 Pro 5G, which is a complete redesign of the BR1 Pro. We've got other videos that go deep into this device. Um, it's got a lot of capabilities, um, and it, interestingly, it is actually using the same Sierra Wireless EM9191 modem module for its 5G capabilities as the MoFi 5500 here. So it should be comparable, right, um, in some ways? Keep in mind, the PepWave is a completely different class of device. It is cost $14.99, so more than twice what the MoFi 5500 does. It has a whole different set of features. It is a Wi-Fi 6, 802.11ax. It has fewer Ethernet ports, but it is a much smaller and a more mobile-friendly uh, type of device to install. And then the big difference is, of course, the software and the support. So PepWave is higher end enterprise, much more polished software. MoFi software in the past, well, in the past we've talked about how the MoFi software made us cry. It was, um, they had some really, really major software issues. And just now between, uh, over the last few months, the MoFi has been basically completely pushing an entirely new version of their software, completely new user interface that at least on first impression, seems a lot easier to use and manage. It gets rid of a lot of just the the things that made it seem so unprofessional before or unusable, like you know HTML rendering errors, text on top of text, spelling mistakes. The new UI seems a lot more approachable. Still a little complicated and confusing, but huge improvements. And at least so far in our initial testing, it seems to crash a lot less. So some 
potentially huge improvements in the MoFi software make it more user-friendly. Some of the other major considerations with the MoFi 5500, um, particularly relative to the Pepwave Max BR1 Pro 5G, uh, one feature the BR1 Pro 5G lacks that we've been begging Pepway for is it does not have USB tethering. The MoFi does. Now, both of these support Wi-Fi as WAN. Um, the Pepway's got much, much more advanced features around controlling your load balancing and doing connection bonding and things like that. Um, but the MoFi actually has some uh, cloud features they're starting to roll out with you know, the ability to get a static IP address from MoFi, MoFi directly and um, do some uh, VPN services. So there's some interesting stuff evolving here. Uh, the MoFi has definitely improved significantly from uh, our first look in March and way, way from the old MoFi 4500. So a lot has evolved here. Now, one other thing of note, we noticed when the MoFi 5500 came here, they actually sent a whole extra set of cellular antennas. They are labeled, these are labeled ultra wide band max range one 4G antennas. And these are ultra 5G band max range two 5G antennas. And you know, MoFi, they're physically identical externally. They probably have different tunings inside. We've reached out to MoFi to try and get some more technical details of why you would use one or the other. But their basic thing is for 5G, use these antennas. For 4G, use these antennas. But more often than not, you're connecting to, well, <laughs> a combination of the above because most of the 5G networks right now are 5G layered on top of 4G simultaneously. So we're going to be digging in to try and do some guidance on when you would use which of these antennas. But it's nice that they include two different tuned antennas in the box. It might just be, depending on where you are, try them both, although that's a real hassle to change them out. So now, now just to kind of wrap it up, the, the big question is, is it time to invest in a 5G cellular router? And here at the end of 2021, probably still, probably not for most people, um, unless you're on T-Mobile. T-Mobile's network is leaps and bounds ahead of Verizon and AT&T as far as rolling out real worthwhile 5G over a longer range. Even into a lot of rural areas, T-Mobile is pushing some decent 5G using the 600 megahertz spectrum they have, and then now the mid-band, um, the mid-band band 41 or N41 um, that they acquired from Sprint. So they've got a lot of spectrum. They've done a lot more to roll out real worthwhile 5G than Verizon and AT&T have done over a wider area. But the catch is, you know, the all of these routers we've talked about here are using the Qualcomm X55 modem that even on T-Mobile, it can either do 5G 600 megahertz or 5G um, mid-band uh, band 41, it cannot use both of those bands simultaneously. That's just a limitation of the, that generation of Qualcomm modem. So the real potential for a lot of these T-Mobile 5G networks is when you're able to do um, band 71 and band 41 5G simultaneously combine the range of 71 to the speed of 41. And none of this will be able to connect and combine like that. That'll be the next generations of modems that are out in smartphones like the iPhone 13 and stuff like that, but are not, haven't propagated out to routers. So by the time the networks have evolved, um, there may be a new version of this that has Qualcomm X60 or X65 modems that is better able to take advantage of the networks. And then, well, if you are on Verizon or AT&T, they're actually right now in the middle of a major delay in their mid-band 5G rollouts because of you know, some conflicts with the FAA over aviation safety. So Verizon and AT&T are putting off um, their mid-band, their C-band 5G rollouts for potentially six months before they start to do, um, you know, to really up the power and push the deployment of that. So they're kind of pausing their mid-band rollouts. They have longer range uh, 5G that is really not much better than 4G, and in some cases not, not great at all that they've pushed, and then some super fast 5G that is only found in urban centers. And well, none of these devices support the millimeter wave to talk to that super fast, short range urban um, networks that Verizon and AT&T have focused on. Those are very, very specialized right now and uh, really not well suited to routers. And then when it comes to the long range, well, they, they support, and we've been able to connect to um, 
you know, some of these with to Verizon and AT&T's 5G, but the long range 5G from Verizon and AT&T is really nothing special right now. And when they do turn on that C-band, mid-band network, again, none of these X55 based devices will be able to use the mid-band and the long range simultaneously. So they are, you're going to be wanting to upgrade any of these first generation 5G cellular routers within the next year or two or three. So keep that in mind before investing in gear like this. On the other hand, all of these devices are at the absolute pinnacle of 4G capability. So you know, whether, whatever cellular network you're on, all of them, the, the 4G capabilities should be absolutely superb. They support every band that is in use in the United States. Um, they have the ability to combine them and use 4x4 MIMO and use multi-carrier aggregation. So these all should be really, really great 4G devices, even if, well, they're not super future-proof when it comes to 5G. So keep that in mind before planning your gear investments and upgrades. Now, this is just a, a really quick, you know, kind of you know, first slash second look at the MoFi lineup. We are beginning to do some hands-on testing. We, of course, will be sharing our hands-on testing results and experiences and our experiences with the new MoFi software, the pluses and minuses of it, with our MIA members. We share that in our testing in progress form. So if you are a member of our site, join us there and follow along as we go deeper playing with and putting all these routers head to head to see their pluses, minuses, and the various trade-offs. So thank you members for supporting us and letting us do all of this work. These videos are brought to you by our premium members and mobile internet aficionados. They make it possible for us to track this news and create these videos. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe to our channel, or better yet, consider becoming a member yourself.